you guys are with us. It's so great to see everyone this morning. Go ahead and turn around, wave to someone, say hello, say good morning. And then you guys can actually be seated for just a minute. And I'm going to invite my friend Simon to come on up here and help me with a little announcement. Can you guys give it up for Simon? Yep. I just asked Simon to come help me with this, so he is super brave. But this upcoming Friday, as many of you guys know, I'm the children's pastor, and I love to make messes, right? So this upcoming Friday, we are starting back our third to fifth grade community group. So anyone in third to fifth grade is welcome to come Friday night here at the church, 530 you get to drop your kids off. We get to have lots of fun here. And then you get to pick them up two hours later. So it's a pretty good deal. Oh, and they get to learn about Jesus. And so we are starting a series called Messy. And this series is all about, it talks about how our lives get kind of awkward and messy sometimes, especially as kids. But we want our kids to know that God loves them no matter how messy we get. And so to kick off this series, is it heavy? To kick off this series, we're going to do something fun, and I'm going to have you guys guess what we're doing. There might be a little hint on the screen behind me, but what two ingredients are you holding, Simon? Baking soda and soap. Baking soda and soap. So can you guys guess what we're making on Friday? Are they right, Simon? Yes. Yes. Do you like to make slime? I know. That gave it away. Do you like to make slime? Will you be there on Friday? Yes, definitely. Probably. Absolutely. All right. Thank you, Simon. You can go put it down. I know it's heavy. You guys can give him a round of applause. Yeah. So I've never made slime with these two ingredients before, but Miss Natalie has, and she says it's awesome. So I'm excited. Make sure you're there. And at this time, all of our four-year-olds up to fifth grade, you guys are dismissed. Go back to kids' class. I'm sure we'll be making some sort of mess today, too. And everyone else can stand with me. We're just going to pray and go back into worship. And you know what? Even as adults, our lives get messy right? sometimes, right? But my prayer this morning as we go back into worship, no matter what kind of messes we might be in right now, we know, too, that God loves us and he's with us and he wants to meet us here this morning. So let's pray. Father, I just thank you, God, no matter how messy our lives get, no matter how far we think we are from you or how far we might be from you, God, we know that you are still there and you want to meet with us this morning as we worship you. And so, Father, I just pray as we come into this time of worship, Father, that we remember that it's all about you and that your presence just meets us wherever we are at in our lives so that we can worship and glorify you together. In your name, amen.
In the middle of the 
we just close our eyes for just one second? A couple weeks ago, um, Haley talked about how um, sometimes we just make things complicated. And I just want to say something very simple to us this morning as we have been in the presence of Jesus, as we have sung and worshipped him for how worthy he is, for how he comes to fight for us. That's because God loves you. And that is simple, but it's true. Can you just listen to those words one more time? God, God, the God of the universe, the God who created you, loves. He doesn't just tolerate, doesn't just like you, kind of. He loves you, not just the whole world. He loves you. I'm going to ask us to be seated at this time, and um, we're staying in the same spirit of worship. I want us to watch this video just with a fresh um, understanding that God loves you, and then we're going to pray to close our time of worship. Let's take a look at this video. God loves you. It's a plaque on a wall in your grandmother's house. It's another Instagram post with another sunset. It's a cheap band-aid on a fatal wound. But God does love you. It's the only reason anything will ever matter. It's the difference between eternal death and endless life. It's the hope that remains when despair is exhausted. It's your place at the table with the Father who has always wanted you. God loves you. That's why I bow on my knees to ask the Father to give you His power deep inside, to keep His Son rooted in your heart so you'll finally be strong enough to understand what cannot be known. God loves you you. Would you just close your eyes with me? Ephesians 3, 18 says this, and I pray that you, you church, you being rooted and established in love, may you have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, to grasp how high, how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. Lord, I pray right now, just as we close out this time of of worship, of singing to you, Lord, would would we just know this in our hearts? We can't go anywhere um, these days without seeing all kinds of things about love and Valentine's Day or listening to songs on the radio uh, just about Um, earthly love. God, but I thank you that your love is so much bigger than that. And I just pray right now that you would just seal that in our hearts, Lord, as we just take these couple minutes just to remember your love is deep and it's wide. It covers a multitude of sin. And we just thank you for that. And we just rest in your love today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, thank, can you thank the worship team? Thank you guys for serving today and leading us in worship. Well, good morning. Are you guys awake and alive? Can you wave at me? Hello. It's nice to see you all. Welcome today to Sea Life. We're so glad you're here. If you're visiting with us, we love guests. We're super happy that you're here. Um, if you are a visitor with us, please stop by our welcome table. Um, in the lobby after service. We'd love to give you a gift. We'd love to say hello to you. We won't be weird, I promise, but we just want to say hi. And if you're watching with us online, shout out to you also. Please click the link, and we'd love to know that you're here too and say hello to you also. So I just have a couple quick announcements. Is that okay before we get into our message? The first one is um, kind of a save the date coming up in uh, next month on March 19th. We are going to be having a baptism service here 
at Sea Life. Now, baptism is one of our favorite times here um, because we get to celebrate the life change that Jesus has done in people's lives. And if our church is not about that, then what are we doing, right? So we are very excited about this. We've had several people that have made commitments to Jesus in the last several months, and we the next step is baptism, right? To go public with your faith and to um, say that in front of your church family that I've decided to follow Jesus. And so um, if you're interested in baptism or if you know someone that has recently made a commitment to Christ or, or recommitted their life to Christ, um, please get them this information. Sunday, March 19th, you can sign up on the app. You can talk to me after service. We would love to do that. So next thing I want to share before um, we pray for our offering is that community groups have started. Can I get a woo-woo or something like that? Community groups have started. Yes. How many of y'all have already gone to a community group this week? Some of you guys. Okay. Um, yes, groups have started. Men's group started Wednesday night. I wasn't there, obviously, but I heard it was great. Um, I heard they had so much fun. Um, seasoned adults group started last night at my house, and it was a riot. I am telling you. I can't tell you what happened. What happens at seasoned adults stays at seasoned adults, is what I'm told. Um, but I will tell you this. We were, so Rod and I aren't technically old enough to be in the seasoned adults, but we kind of sneak in because it's at our house. And my daughters were there, and they had invited a friend over. So after all the um, group had gone through the line to get their dinner, you know, I let the kids come down and get food so I wouldn't have to feed them, right? And um, the seasoned adults were like, hey, wait, they're not old enough to be here. Those are youth, youth age kids. So they said, seasoned adults said, they're going to come to the youth group and steal food from them, okay? So I'm just saying, watch out at youth on Monday nights. Um, that was really fun. Youth has started on Monday nights. There's a women's group that starts tonight. There's a, a Tuesday morning women's group um, that's starting up. And so if you have not gotten connected in a community group, guys, now is the time. Um, please check out the list of groups. We need to be um, shoulder to shoulder with people who are going to be fighting with us and for us um, in this season. So community groups, we're excited about that. Um, I want to just pray for our offering before we get into our message today. Um, last week, we heard an awesome story from um, Holly Schramm, who's part of our church, about why she and her husband have decided to just give and put God first in their finances, and how we don't do that out of obligation. We do that out of a cheerful heart. And so we're going to pray over our offering today. If you want to participate in giving, um, you can do that on our app. You can do it online. We have a giving table um, at the back near the exit, but um, let's just take a minute and pray for our offering today. Lord, we thank you so much for the chance um, to be able to worship through giving, Lord, that we um, see this as an act of worship, as a way to put you in the top slot in our lives. And so, God, I thank you that you would take um, the offering that's given today, that you would bless it. God, I pray that every giver would just experience your blessing, not just financially, but in their lives, God, that as they put you first, God, that, that they would see that you bless their lives so much and so deeply, God. We give back to you um, out of gratitude. We give back to you out of obedience, and we pray that you'd take this offering and you would use every penny to further your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay, well, we're in a pretty intense sermon series right now called Peace of Mind, um, where we're really talking about mental health. And so, Let's take a look at this video, and then we're going to invite Pastor Matt up to share with us today.
Well, good morning. Um, I work at an auto dealership, and on the days I'm working, I tend to be there a lot. Um, I tend to be there from about 11 hours, uh, from 9 a.m. till 8 p.m. And if I have a customer, I'm there after 8, so it's often until 9 or 10. Um, all of you have been to a dealership before, uh, and you know that there is music always playing in the showroom um, because God knows we can't sit in silence for 30 seconds. So um, our music at our dealership is over satellite radio, Sirius XM radio that plays over the speakers. Now, there are hundreds of uh, satellite radio stations out there, but the showroom's a public place. There are often kids there. Um, and satellite radio doesn't censor their, mu their songs like they do on regular radio. So we have to be careful which stations we have on um, because, uh, and I'm sure none of you guys know this because you're all good God-fearing, church-going people, but some songs have bad words in them. So um, there are a handful of stations you know won't have any bad words in them, in the songs, which means that some stations get played for days and weeks and months at a time uh, over the radio. And for those of you who are coming in for service or buying a car, hopefully, worst case scenario, you're only there for a few hours, although it takes time to buy a car. But um, I'm there for a minimum of 11 hours every workday. And here's another thing you should know about radio, is that, especially music radio. Um, studies have shown that the average listener listens to the radio for about 14 minutes. Um, and so when somebody turns on a, rate, a station, they have about 20 seconds to grab the listener's attention to get those 14 minutes. So if the listener turns on the radio and doesn't hear a song they know, um, they're gone. They're on to something else. Um, so if you've ever wondered why radio stations play the same songs over and over again, that's why. Uh, because if you don't recognize the song, you're not going to stick around. Which brings me back to sitting at the dealership for 11 hours in the row, uh, listening to the same songs over and over again. Now, sometimes it's okay. Um, right around Thanksgiving, they switch over to Christmas music, uh, which I really enjoy, for about two weeks. And then when it's the fifth time, fifth time I've heard Santa Baby that day, I'm kind of done. Um, and by the time Christmas rolls around a month later, forget it. I'm out. Um, one of the stations we can play at without much danger is this 70s kind of light rock station. And I kind of, I admit, I kind of like it. Um, the music's before my time, but I know it, and it has some good stuff. And they play these different sets of music. So when they're playing... America or John Denver or all the songs that made the Guardian of the Galaxy soundtrack. Um, I kind of, I can deal with that. I kind of like that. But then there are other sets. Um, when I've heard Convoy, which is a song about a truck convoy, which I'm, yes, I'm dead serious. When I've heard that for the third time that day, um, or they call him the streak. Um, Kids, look it up. I'm serious. It's real. And you won't believe it. When that happens, I start wondering if Walmart is hiring. So, um, and the hardest part of these songs is that I know all the words. Um, I've heard them a thousand, thousand times, and I can sing along even if they're not playing. Um, I can hear them. You know what it's like to have a song stuck in your head. Uh, we've got a great big convoy trucking through the night. Um, we've got a great big convoy, ain't she a beautiful sight? You know what I'm talking about. Um, you all have your own soundtracks. Uh, if you're a little bit older than me and I start playing the Beatles, you know every word. Um, if you were born in the late 80s, early 90s, and I start playing the Backstreet Boys, you know every word. Um, whatever you were listening to from the time you were about 11 to 16 is in your head forever. Um, You've heard them so many times, it's drilled in there permanently. So for good or for bad, they're part of your soundtrack, and we all have one. Uh, as Renee said, we're in a series called Peace of Mind, and this series is based on some teachings from Life.Church um, that we're borrowing, and it deals with the many aspects of mental health. 
Uh, this is a topic that many of us struggle with. Um, it's a place we are, a place we have been, or we're supporting somebody who's in that place. And we at Sea Life really believe that it's um, super important that the church be able to talk about so issues like this because so many times we're fighting battles that nobody else knows about and no one can see. And we want to help equip you for those battles. And today we're talking about negative thoughts, which is important because our thoughts are really powerful things. Um, pastor and author David Tripp said, no one is more influential in your life than you are because no one talks to you more than you do. Uh, and former Navy SEAL and author David Goggins says, the most important conversations you'll ever have are the ones you'll have with yourself. You wake up with them, you walk around with them, you go to bed with them, and eventually you learn to act on them, whether they are good or bad. So our lives and our actions flow out of the thoughts we have. And this is backed up by the Bible. Um, Proverbs 4.23 says, Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. Now, that word there uh, translated heart is a Hebrew word, lave. That means your thoughts, your inner mind, your consciousness. Uh, the common English version of the Bible translates this verse, more than anything you guard, protect your mind, for life flows from it. Your life flows from the thoughts you have. And what you say to yourself matters way more than you can imagine. Now, let's look at what Romans uh, chapter 8, 5, and 6 says. Those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires. Now, when it says flesh, it's not talking about your body or your skin, but those things outside of God, those things of the world. And it says, those who live according to the things outside of God have their minds set on what the world desires. But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. So those who live in accordance with the things of God have their minds set on what God wants. And what's the result of that? The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. So your thoughts are very important. And if you find yourself regularly discouraged or angry or frustrated or hurting, could it be that your mind is set on the things of this world instead of the things of God? Because if you set on your, minds, your mind on the things of God and of the Spirit, you'll find peace in all you do. And for many of us, that has to do with negative thoughts that are running through our mind all the time. Now, it's okay to have negative thoughts, but when it's recurring and is your default, that's when it's an issue. Um, an author and a speaker and a podcaster I really like is a guy named John Acuff. And he wrote a book called Soundtracks that I'm referring to today that I recommend. It's not specifically a Christian-themed book, although John is a Christian, but it could be. And I'll show you what the Bible has to say about these subjects, too. Um, John calls these recurring thoughts that show up over and over again soundtracks. And it's just shorthand for repeated thoughts that play automatically in our minds, just like that song that's stuck in my head. And these can be for good or for bad. Um, if the soundtrack that regularly plays in your mind is Jesus loves me, or the Lord is my shepherd, or God is good, that's a good thing. And that's fo something focused on the spirit that gives life and peace. But for so many of us, that's not the soundtracks that are playing in your mind. Um, instead, we have what John calls broken soundtracks. And these are negative recurring thoughts. They pop up out of nowhere, but they pop up regularly. Um, I'm such an idiot. Uh, well, man, he's so stupid. Yeah, that's too hard. Gosh, I always blow it. I can't. I'll, I never. Now, there are a few buckets that these broken soundtracks tend to fall into that you may recognize, and I'm going to talk about four of them today. Oftentimes, these broken soundtracks 
come from a place we call relational cynicism. Uh, you've been burned or you were raised in a way that tells you that no one can be trusted. Um, some of those broken soundtracks might be, you can't trust anyone. Um, everyone's just out for what they can get for themselves. Man, he's just going to hurt me. Uh, if I don't get them first, they're going to get me. And relational cynicism is a place where it's really hard to love people well because you're always on your guard. And another bad spot that we find ourselves where we find these soundtracks is a place of negative filtering. You're always focused on what's wrong and never on what's good or right. Um, you always see the cup as half empty, even if it's full. Uh, you go to a restaurant, you have a great meal, except for that one thing, and that's all you want to talk about and complain about. You go on a vacation and ignore all the good stuff and focus on the bad. Um, you go to a church and you focus on that one thing you don't like. It's a place of nitpicking to reinforce your, the assumptions that everything's negative anyway. Uh, sometimes our negative thoughts come from a place of polarized thinking. And I think this is getting worse and worse because of media and social media over time. Um, it's the kind of thinking where everything's absolute. There's no shades of gray. Uh, you've seen one person do something or think something or say something. Um, so that's now true for all of those people. All men are just, uh, all Democrats, yeah, all Republicans. If a person disagrees with you in one thing, you are sure they are uh, wrong on everything and you write them off. And someone who disagrees with your thinking is often less than. A warning sign is if you ever have a disparaging nickname for a whole class of people, this might be an issue. Um, just because you're right doesn't mean you're righteous, um, which is a sermon I will save for somebody else. Um, I think, uh, the, and then the fourth one, I think that most often our bro broken soundtracks have to do with speaking to ourselves. Uh, and frankly, some of us, and I'm really speaking to myself here, just aren't very nice to ourselves. Um, we have mean talk. Yeah, I can't do anything right. I'm such an idiot. I'm so lazy. God, yeah, I'm, I'm so ugly. I never look right. Uh, no one likes me. Or maybe it's not a phrase. Maybe it's a memory. Um, something, the time you did or said something really embarrassing. Uh, the mistake you made that you replay over and over in your head even years later. Any of those familiar? Any of those ring true? Um, and here's the problem with negativity and broken soundtracks. Broken soundtracks stick better and are harder and harder than positive soundtracks. They imprint on, imprint on your brain and last longer. Um, let me give you a completely hypothetical example. But have you ever given a sermon or a message at a church? And afterwards, a dozen people walked up to you and said, wow, that was great. Thank you so much. That really helped. And then one person gave a mild criticism or was less than enthusiastic. Which comment do you think this hypothetical speecher, speaker um, obsessed about for the rest of the week? The dozen positive ones or the one negative one, hypothetically? Um, have you ever posted something on social media that was really important to you and looked at all the positive comments and then there was that one negative comment? Um, even if you knew that negative comment was completely wrong, which one are you thinking about? Um, which one are you answering in your head over and over again? Uh, I've never read a book, but I've heard authors talk about all the reviews they get on Amazon and how the one-star reviews just suck them in. Um, there can be a thousand positive ones, but those are the ones they read. And since broken soundtracks are recurring, they're also habit-forming. Our brains have this thing called neuroplasticity, which basically means that once you've thought something, it's easier to think that again. Um, think of it as your thought creates paths or uh, tracks or patterns in our mind. And it's easy for, easier for those new thoughts to fall back into those again. So when we frequently entertain negative thoughts, it trains our brain to go back to that place again. And out of those negative thoughts flows our lives. 
Um, some of us are thinking our ways into lives we hate. So what do we do about it? Um, how do we stop broken soundtracks? Well, first we have to identify which soundtracks are broken. And John Acuff gives us some questions to ask when these reoccurring thoughts pop up to see if they're broken soundtracks. So the first question to ask yourself is, is it true? Maybe the broken soundtrack you've been playing over and over again is, man, I can't do anything right. Is that really true? You can't do anything right? Nothing? Um, or maybe instead is it that you tried to do something difficult and struggled because it was new and you had never done it before. So it's not true that you can't do anything right, but instead it's true that things that are hard to do are hard to do. Um, and it's time to retire that broken soundtrack. Proverbs 12.22 says, The Lord detests lying lips, but he delights in people who are trustworthy. Stop lying to yourself, even if it's about yourself. Now, the second question to ask if it's a broken soundtrack is, uh, first is, is it true? Second is, is it helpful? Does it move you forward or keep you stuck? Does it change things for the better? Or does it help you make a decision? That time in middle school, or you were at that party, or you were at work, or it was a complete stranger on the street, and you said something really dumb or embarrassing. Now, is it true that it was embarrassing? Yeah, absolutely. It was. You can justify it and excuse it, but either way, it's true. But is it helpful to revisit that memory over and over again? Does it move you forward? Of course not. So, time to retire that broken soundtrack. Or maybe you're stuck in polarized thinking and you're scrolling through your social media, and your blood is boiling, and you're thinking, man, how can anyone think that? They are such idiots. Yeah, No, you know what? They're not idiots. They're evil. Those are evil people. Now, you're ready to vent. Uh, so you ask yourself, is what I'm saying true? Absolutely. It's true. But is it helpful? Are you going to change anyone's mind because of the three sentences you're about to write on Facebook? Is that person going to say, ah, I see the light, you are so right? No, of course not. All you're going to do is start a fight where people, stop, uh, where people listen less and not more. So it's time to retire that soundtrack. Ephesians 4.31 says, Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, and clamor and slander be put away from you, along with all malice. Um, some of us have a little too much clamor in our lives, and a lot of it's coming from us. And finally, the third question, ask yourself, is it kind? Is it kind? This is something I struggle with a lot. I have friends who call me out on this all the time. Um, is this something you would say to a friend? And if not, don't say it to yourself. It may be true that you did something wrong, and it may be helpful to keep you from doing that wrong thing again. But saying, I'm such an idiot, is that kind? No, of course not. Colossians 3.12 says, Put on then as God's chosen one, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. That includes towards yourself. So, is it true? Is it helpful? Is it kind? And if the answer is no to any of those, it's a broken soundtrack. Time to get rid of it. Um, now, of course, that's easier said than done, um, which, by the way, is a broken soundtrack because it's not helpful because everything is easier said than done. But once you've identified a broken, a broken soundtrack, it's time to replace it. So in 1 Samuel chapter 30, um, there's this story where David and his men are returning from a raiding party. And they find out that while they were gone, uh, the enemy had attacked and completely destroyed their village. Uh, and even worse, they had taken captive all the women and all the children of the village. And so verse 4 says, So David and his men wept aloud until they had no strength left to weep, as you can imagine. Um, they were in this huge negative place, and the men were even talking about stoning David in their grief. But then verse 6 says, But David 
strengthened himself in the Lord his God. He strengthened himself in the Lord. Um, how did he do that? Well, we don't know. Um, it doesn't say in Scripture. But we have a hint because we know in where David said in other parts of Scripture how he strengthened himself in God in other times of trouble. For example, in Psalm 103.8, David writes, The Lord is compassionate and gracious and uh, slow to anger, abounding in love. And then in Psalm 86.15, David writes, But you, Lord, are a compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness. And then in Psalm 145.8, David writes, The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. So is it possible that when David's, when it says David strengthened himself in the Lord, that he reminded himself that the Lord is compassionate, that he's full of grace, that he's slow to anger, that he's abounding in love? Yeah, I'd say it's not only possible, it's likely. That's what he did. But where did David learn all these things about God? Well, of course, it was reinforced through his experiences when he faced a lion and when he faced Goliath, and when the king was trying to chase him down and, and kill him. He learned about God's character as God held him through all these really difficult times. But he originally learned that God is com a compassionate and gracious and slow to anger and abounding in love when God said it of himself back in Exodus 34. And he, that's God, passed in front of Moses proclaiming, the Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness. God had taken scripture and hid it in his heart. So when, it was, when he needed it, it was there. When things were desperate and he needed to strengthen himself in the Lord, he was able to bring up that scripture and say, the Lord is a Lord of compassion. The Lord is a Lord of grace. And he's slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness. He was able to take the negativity and replace it with the truth, the truth of Scripture. So for us, when we've identified a broken soundtrack, it's time to replace it. And there's no better way to replace it than the truth of God's Word. So when a broken soundtrack pops up and says, I can't do anything right, you can remember that Philippians says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Or when the broken soundtrack says, man, I am such an idiot. You can remind yourself that 1 Corinthians 13 says, love is patient. Love is kind. It always protects. It always trusts. Or the soundtrack that says, I'm so ugly. You can remember that God made you and you are fearfully and wonderfully made. And that the Lord sees not as man sees. Man looks on outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Or you, when you tell yourself, no one likes me, you can know that greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friend. And who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Take your broken soundtracks and replace them with new soundtracks. And finally, keep repeating them over and over again until they're as automatic as the old ones. Because that's the good thing about neuroplasticity. Your negative thoughts can become habits and wear tracks in your mind, but so can your positive thoughts. You can create new tracks for your thoughts to follow. And as you keep repeating and meditating and soaking in God's truth, you'll have new habits in your thinking. Habits that are of the spirit and bring life and peace. Now, one caution to all of this. Um, as I said, our negative, the negative in our lives has more sticking power than the positive. So it takes work to get to a place where the positive soundtracks are the ones that are uh, getting played. You have to keep at it. And it's not going to happen all at once. Author and speaker David Thomas said, the problem with the internal voices we hear is that we want a switch. We think there's a switch out there that we can just find it and we can turn it off the background noise completely. We only have to do it one time and we'll never hear it again. It's not a switch, though. It's a dial. 
The goal isn't to turn everything off completely. You can't do that. Instead, it's to turn down the volume. And that's good news because what it means is that when a negative thought comes back, it means you didn't blow it. You didn't fail. It just means the dial's a little higher, and we need to work to turn it back down again. So give yourself grace. Now, how do we turn down the volume? Well, for some of us, it's to step away from the, thing, the negative things that are encouraging negative thoughts. Uh, Galatians 6 says, A man reaps what he sows. Whoever sows to please the flesh, from the flesh will reap destruction. Whoever sows to please the Spirit, from the Spirit will reap eternal life. So we need to consider what we're sowing in our lives because that's what we're going to reap. And for some of us, we need to rethink our relationship with the news or with culture or social media or the music we listen to or with shows we watch or with our friend groups. Are these things, things increasing or decreasing the volume on your negative thoughts? Some of you may need to go on a negativity fast. You get caught up in the negativity of the news and that algorithm on a social media site that keeps you just spiraling down um, so that they can keep you on their site and make more money off of you. Or you surround yourself with people who are just negative. Maybe it's time to rethink some of that. Um, one thing I personally noticed in my life is that some of the podcasts I was listening to really were turning up the volume on my negativity. I told myself, I want to be informed. I want to know what's going on in the world. But really, how helpful is that for me? Um, I was informed, but I was also in a really negative place. Now, I'm not saying we should stick our heads in the sand. And if any of you are going to run for Congress, go for it. Be as informed as possible. Um, but I'm not running for Congress. How, how helpful is it that I know the ins and outs and intricacies of certain specific issues so I can be good with arguing with my coworker, um, so I won't lose a social media debate? And at what cost to my relationships and mental health? Is it really worth it? And... Is that the call on my life anyway? I'm called to be a light on the hill, to help people come into a growing relationship with Jesus Christ, to spread the gospel to the outermost parts of the world, to love my neighbor, to love my God with all my heart, my soul, mind, and strength. Does negativity I was channeling into my life help me or hinder me in that calling? The Bible says they will know us by our love, not how well we argue public policy. So I made the decision to fill that time I was listening to podcasts with audiobooks instead. And they've spoken much more life and peace into me ever since. And I'm much better off for the decision. Now, I'm not telling you to, to, do, to, the, to do the same thing. I'm not telling you to do anything. But if negative thinking is impacting your mental health, your life, and your peace, maybe it's time to pray about it and to consider what changes you need to make to turn down the dial. So, where to start? Um, Pastor Craig Groeschel talks about power thoughts that we can meditate on, that we can ruminate and soak in into our hearts and into our souls and create new tracks in our mind. Now, it's not specifically Scripture, but it's all based on the truth of God's Word. So, let's go through these. And when your broken soundtracks show up, have these in a place, whether it's on your phone, on a paper on your desk, or memorize them so you can replace the broken soundtracks with a new soundtrack. Um, these will be in the notes on the app, and, or you can take a picture of them on the screen. If you're struggling with relational cynicism, meditate on these truths. With God's help, I will get rid of all skepticism and bitterness. I choose to believe the best about others and be kind, compassionate, and loving. I will love and forgive others as Jesus loved and forgiven me. Or you're in a place of negative filtering. Meditate on this. God, by your power, I take every thought captive and make it obedient to the truth of Christ. Because you are good, I choose to think on what's good, right, true, helpful, and worthy of praise. 
As I trust in you, your peace will guard my heart, soul, and mind. Um, If you're struggling with absolute thinking, let this soak into your thoughts and into your heart. As Jesus loved and accepted me, I will love and accept others. Rather than being called to always be right, I am called to always be loving. Rather than just making a point, I choose to make a difference. In humility, I choose to love others above myself. If you're struggling with mean thinking and being kind to yourself, let this be in your heart instead. I am a son or daughter of the God who created the universe, who spoke everything into existence, yet you know my name. Since before the world was created, you have loved me and you have planned for me, and you will give me everything I need to fulfill your plan for my life, and you will never leave me or forsake me. You are a good father who loves me forever. So, start there. Or even better, write your own power thoughts. Based on the truth of what God shows you as you meditate on scripture to replace the broken soundtracks in your heart. Can you all stand with me? Some of you are going through really hard things. Um, You have circumstances in your life that are not just difficult, but are desperate. But know that God is still good, and God still loves you. That's a soundtrack worth hearing over and over again, getting it stuck in your head. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you never leave us where we are. We thank you that you want to be in our thoughts so that our thoughts can flow into our lives. We ask you to help us replace the broken things in us, the negative thoughts that can continually pop in and come back with your truth. We thank you for providing that truth and the way you love us through it, Lord. Help us replace those things, Lord. Help us step out of place, the place of negativity and brokenness and into a place of life and peace. We love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. I would just encourage you to to just let the Holy Spirit minister to you. Um, When we worship God, when we tell him and declare how holy and how worthy he is, it's not just for him, it changes us. And when we sing this song, when we praise him and glorify who he is, you're changed in that. There's change that happens inside of us when we choose to worship. So would you do that with me as we sing this morning?
are so glad that you chose to spend this morning with us. If you're here in person, if you're here with us online, um, if you are our guest of honor today, um, if you're here in person, we have a gift for you. Please stop by the welcome table on your way out. If you're online, click that link below so we can connect with you. Um, if you'd like to give in person today, our giving table is in the back on the right. And please, please, please consider joining a community group starting this week. Um, check the list on our app or our email and uh, a community group leader will reach out to you. So uh, before we go, let's pray. God, there is truly nothing like being in your presence. And God, I just pray that um, no matter how we walked in, Lord, that we will walk out different because we know you more. And so, Lord, Thank you for being the same yesterday, today, and forever, being the beginning um, and the end. And Lord, we just pray that you protect us as we leave um, or log out to until we meet again. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a great week, guys. Thank you.